what is going on guys, Smooth Razor here, back with a brand new video, and today we have another Top 5 Friday, but there's a twist, as from now on we'll be doing your Top 5s, and um, the way we've done the series then, well I started a poll on what has been your favourite F1 season to watch um, during the 2000s era, so you know from 2000 to 2013, and I created a poll and you guys have voted, <clears throat> amazingly 32 of you have voted including the likes of Harrison 101 and Atona, so I'm very grateful to everyone that voted. But we do have a clear top five. Um, I must start off then in fifth place, and that is with 2003. This is a fantastic year um, with Michael Schumacher taking the chance by just two points from Kimi Raikkonen, and there was an amazing battle between Schumacher and Raikkonen. And if you know, Raikkonen had just managed to get that win in Japan in the season closer, and it could have been a very different result. But a fantastic season, we saw some great races, and ultimately, you know, it was the consistency of Schumacher only retiring once in the whole year, and every race he finished, he finished in the points. And then um, Kimi Raikkonen amazingly only won once, but still managed to finish second in the championship. We also had Raul Schumacher winning in um, Germany and France in consecutive races, and also Barrichello, um, Barrichello, uh, you know, that brilliant win in Britain, which probably the race of the season was probably um, Britain 2003. That was a great race um, with a truly leading and then Barrichello finally taking the win. And I can definitely see why um, three of you have voted for that. That's 9% of the votes. And then in at fourth was 2007. Another really good year with an even closer finish when Kimi Raikkonen took the championship from both Alonso and Hamilton by just one point. It was very dramatic. Um, you know, Raikkonen went on a mega run in the past. In the last five races, he finished on the podium every time, and he also so the last seven races he finished um, on the podium, and it also got back-to-back -to -back wins in China and Brazil. And then ultimately it was the um, Hamilton, you know, got ditching it into his, into the gravel at China that cost him his title bid, and Fernando Alonso, you know, just uh, sort of being beaten by his teammate and him, his uh, problem in Japan also cost him. And, you know, the championship just going down to one point was quite amazing. But we did see some really good races. Um, you know, many great races. You can tell from the season opener, the top three at the season opener were the top three in the um, final standings. And also Felipe Massa chipping in there and the two BMW Saubers. And then, of course, Heike Kovalainen um, getting that magic podium in Japan. That was definitely one of the um, races of the season. And also Wurtz's podium. And also Weber's podium in Germany. There's a lot of unpredictable podium finishes, but um, and a very um, unpredictable championship, which turned out just to be by one by Kimi Raikkonen by just one point. And we're moving on in our countdown to number three, and that is 2008 Lewis Hamilton's championship-winning year, where he just won from by he just beat Felipe Massa literally by a corner. Um, he managed to overtake Timo Glock, who just his tyres were absolutely dead. He managed to overtake him um, and then to actually do amazingly win the championship, even though Felipe Massa had done a brilliant job, um, you know, to clinch the win at Brazil and uh, looking very likely he was going to win the championship until Hamilton did manage to overtake um, Timo Glock. And I'm sure Hamilton will still be sending postcards, sorry, Christmas cards to Timo Glock. I'm probably sending postcards now, but of course Glock is in DTM. And, you know, for him just to win the championship by one point. There were two really good years, I think, 2007 to 8, 2008. The field was pretty much the same. But also we had the rise of BMW Sauber and what looked like they could be a massive force in um, 2009. But, of course, they changed all the rules and they kind of lost all the performance in 2009. But, you know, Kvitsa, who could forget the, you know, the BMW Sauber 1-2 in Canada? And then also Hyde Field. Um, I reckon, I think he did got four second places but just didn't manage to get the win. I think he holds the record for the most starts without an F1 win. And, um, you know, 2008 was one of those years where you just couldn't, you know, it was really hard to see Highfield not winning, um, and, you know, quite painful for him. And also Kimi Raikkonen, you know, being out of the title race after he had some bad luck between Belgium and Singapore. And, of course, Singapore, Crashgate, you know, who could forget that? And also Alonso winning in Japan. And then, of course, Vettel in Italy. There were so many great races that combined um, to make 2008 such a great year. And also, not just from a championship point of view, but also, you know, like I mentioned, standalone races like Canada, um, Singapore, Monza, you know, just some really good races. And um, 
2008 was definitely one of my favourite years as well. Better move just two left in the countdown then. And um, in second place was 2010, a fantastic season in which we had five drivers going for the title. It's probably the first time in Formula 1 we've ever seen that. I think going into the final race we had four cars that could win. But pretty much, you know, before that it was looking like a five-way fight. Mark Webber seemed to have it in the bag until he ditched it into the barrier at Korea. Fernando Alonso seemed to have it in the bag before he got held up behind Petrov. Hamilton, his bid just really fell apart since his win in Belgium. His two retirements in Italy and Singapore just put him on the back foot, as well as retirement in Korea, the same race where Mark Webber also had a retirement. And, um, sorry, <laughs> Hamilton came second in the Korean race. Looking like his championship was back on track, but, you know, the championship won by four points from Sebastian Vettel, who won the championship brilliantly to get back-to-back -back race wins in Brazil and Abu Dhabi. And then for Fernando Alonso, just get held up behind Petrov for Weber to crash in Korea. Just, you know, came together to make an absolutely amazing season. Um, you know, like I said, we've had five drivers. Jensen Button also pitching in there as well. Felipe Massa, um, you know, kind of looking from the outside after his return from his crash in Hungary. He sort of picked up podiums. Rosberg also picked up podiums. We also had Kvitsa, who got a podium in Monaco. Australia and Hungary and then also some um, really great racing as we saw the entry of three new teams and a sort of the start of a new dawn for Formula 1 as we saw the um, BMW and Toyota leaving we had teams such as Cater and Rusha and HRT all entering the sport and a new champion in Sebastian Vettel emerging after failing to win in 2009 Red Bull and him definitely came back absolutely fighting but number one, you can probably guess by now, the one that hasn't been mentioned is F1 2012, voted by Harrison 101 and eight other people. So it came together then by voted by nine people and um, took 28% of the votes. And, um, you know, quite a clear winner for me, definitely. I think it's probably, it just edges out 2010 for me as um, the best Formula 1 season of the 2000s. A fantastic season once again won by Vettel by just three points who can forget the you know the epic climax in Brazil where we saw Vettel spinning looking like Alonso had it and the charge through the field yet again that we saw quite often throughout the season from Vettel you know like in Abu Dhabi where he managed to get onto the podium and who'd have thought that you know the guy who um, was got a puncture after hitting the rear of Kartikai in Malaysia would go on to take the title it was an absolutely outstanding story but, um, you know, it's such heartbreak for Fernando Alonso. But also the rise of Kimi Raikkonen, the return of Kimi Raikkonen was definitely one of the key themes. He finished in third with that amazing win in Abu Dhabi. We had eight different winners. Who could forget Pastor Maldonado, even though he finished in 15th in the standings, getting that win in Spain. And also Rosberg really started the revolution, but, you know, from Mercedes and the momentum that they would carry on into 2014 with that win in China and also Mark Webber's two wins and looking like Mark Webber maybe could have a comeback after Silverstone but his championship fell apart and it was definitely down to Vettel and Alonso and then of course that epic season finale. So that concludes this week's top five then but there will be another top five down in the comment section below and that is the best race of 2014 so be sure to enter that and um, you'll definitely be helping to decide next week's top five result and definitely try and get them in before this coming Wednesday so I can count up the results, make the video and upload it in time for Friday. So be sure to tune in next Friday for another top five. As we're racing, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.